Hello my friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. Today's video is going to be a come book shopping with me because just yesterday my good friend Miss Becca from Becca and the Books was in town for her birthday trip and so I had to go up and see her. And what do you do when you are in New York and you're bookish but go to the bookstore? So I visited three different bookstores. I went to the big Barnes & Noble in Union Square. I went to the Strand for the very first time and I also took a quick pit stop to McNally Jackson. So if you want to see what books I picked up on my New York trip, keep on watching. Actually looks very crazy in the back but I'm here to meet someone very special I'm gonna show you guys in just a second Thank mm -hmm. you. 
just made it to the strand. Say hello to the people. Hey. Say hello to the people. Hello. <laughs> and now we're headed towards fantasy fiction. It's my first time here. Your girl is very, very excited. <gasps> oh, blind date with a book. I have to get one. A blind date with a book. What? The danger is always getting a book I already own. <laughs> So we are going to go in order from the least amount of books I got at a bookstore to the most amount of books that I got at a bookstore. So we're going to start out with what I got from McNally Jackson. So McNally Jackson is an independent bookstore in New York City and I went to their location on Prince Street and I picked up Reputation by Lex Croucher. This is a historical romance and I do believe it's like based on like a Jane Austen type of book. Uh, and I've heard about this one from Chandler, from Chandler Ainsley, so I'm excited to read this one. It says, Reputation, a lady is nothing without one. It is a truth universally acknowledged that girls just want to have fun. And so I do love a historical romance. I do like a Jane Austen retelling. So I'm hoping that this one is going to be a banger. Next up, I picked up four things from the Barnes & Noble on Union Square. First, I got a manga that I have been looking for high and low, and I have not been able to find volume one anywhere, and that is the the Savior's Book Cafe story in another world and this uh, is a manga series I want to say this only comprised of about five volumes and it's about this woman who is an office worker and she has to like save this world and so she gets like a boon from this warrior not warrior but like sorcerer or something like that and um to be this magical savior she decides that she doesn't want to go on a hero's journey but she wants to open her own book cafe and so her wish is to get this book cafe and so when she gets this wish it's already like pre-made and all the other stuff and this is uh the story of like her and another savior starting up some trouble so i'm really intrigued by that really excited to see what i think of it I also picked up The Kingmaker by Kennedy Ryan. This is a traditional 
published re-release of an independently published novel by Kennedy Bryan. This is the first book in the King Maker series. I think the second book is Queen Move and this one is like scandal-esque and I'm told that it's like romantic women's fiction. Um, so I'm excited. I have enjoyed a Kennedy Ryan before and I'm excited to see what this holds. Uh, one thing I do know about her books is they tend to be pretty emotionally charged. So I'm looking forward to seeing if she breaks my heart and this will be my like my new favorite Kennedy Ryan. Next up, I saw that they had signed editions of one of my most anticipated releases of the year, so I had to pick one up, and that is Fractal Noise by Christopher Paolini, the second book in the Fractal first. This is a companion novel to Sleep in the Sea of Stars, which is one of my favorite books of, what was that, 2021? Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. This is a sci-fi thriller, much shorter than the first entry into the Fractal verse. Um, this space crew just discovers an anomaly uh when a beacon calls out into space and the ghosts of their past follow them as they go to and you know investigate and discover what is going on i'm really excited to see in what direction he takes this and to see where in the universe this happens because we spent a great deal of time uh to a degree in that first one so i'm excited to see what's up with this one and it does have like these really stunning end papers that match the end papers from the sleep of stars and look at his signature and then last but not least from Barnes & Noble, they had one of my most anticipated releases out early as well. And that is The Will of the Many by James Islington, the first book in the Hierarchy Trilogy. If you're familiar with James Islington, he is the author of the Lycanius Trilogy, which starts with The Shadow of What Was Lost, which is a series that, while not my favorite, is very unique and has one of the most well-realized characters in Caden that I've ever read, and it really stood out to me. And I've been waiting with bated breath to see what this author would do next, and this is what he's done in the Hierarchy Trilogy. Uh, or in the hierarchy series. I don't know how many books are going to be in this trilogy or this series. Why do I keep saying trilogy? This is at the elite Katanan Academy. A young fugitive uncovers layered mysteries and world changing secrets in this new fantasy. Um, the Katanan Republic, the hierarchy, may rule the world now, but they do not know everything. I tell them my name, I tell them I was orphaned, and the good fortune alone has led to my acceptance into their most prestigious school. I tell them that once I graduate, I will gladly join the rest of civilized society and allowing my strength, my drive, and my focus, what they call the will, to be leached away and added to those above me, as millions already do. I tell them that I belong and they believe me, but the truth is that I have been sent to the academy to find answers, to solve a murder, to search for an ancient weapon, to uncover secrets that may tear the Republic apart. After that, I will never, ever cede my will to the empire that executed my family. And there's more to the story than that because it continues on the back flap, but I think that's enough to get me going and get me interested. And I also really, really like this cover and it's a different publisher and a very different vibe than his other series so i'm excited to see what's what's gonna happen um as a result of that so that is what i got from barnes and noble and then last but not least i also got this little tote from barnes and noble that says and more goodness add more goodness to your gladness and then life is a gift and it is for you last but certainly not least we have the strand i went to the strand for the very first time and honestly i was like a kid in a candy store i definitely plan on going back and spending a bit more time perusing the shelves so i only really looked at like the famous section but i would already had so many books that that was enough so the first thing i got i have this little keychain that says the strand their iconic red logo which i will be putting on my keys immediately and i got this amazing tote bag which on this side it says the strand 18 miles of books and the different genres of books that they carry but the real star of this show and the reason that i picked up this particular specific bag is this it says head of a reader and it has this skull with various genres on it and yeah this is this is a bit of me couldn't leave this one behind and so it has like fiction philosophy history art comics travel children poetry cooking and classics now my brain is not filled up with these particular genres but the vibes 
are there. Here is the stack of books that I picked up from the Strand. We've got a lot of variety, so let's just get into it. The first one I picked up is Have Mercy by Jada Jones and Danielle Bennett. I actually have a YA fantasy by this author duo on my CBR that I have not read, and this, I had never heard of it, but it's an epic fantasy that is apparently exciting, romantic, and funny, according to Peter S. Beagle. But it has to do with these people who are in this dragon core and are at war with this neighboring enemy, and they have these mechanical fuel dragons and if you haven't heard let me tell you now the dragon blog is coming this summer and i'm going to be reading a ton of dragon books and i have been scouring the internet and the various bookshops around me for dragon books that i haven't heard of before or that have a different element to them or that are new so that i can have a wide variety of dragon books featured in this video and so i thought this would be the perfect edition because you know some obscure book that's like out of print or at least this edition is out of print that like nobody's talked about i think this came out in like 2008 um and i would love to like, maybe be a, a source of some resurgence in this in this title or find like an underrated gem that would be like such a cool thing to experience so pick that up this one is The Perfect Assassin by K.A. Door, which is the first book in the Chronicles of Kahid. And this is one that I heard about from my friend Mina. She has this book on her TBR and maybe another series by this author. But it is an assassin. And honestly, that was it for me. Um, I like an assassin story, but I find that most assassin stories involve, involve little to no assassinating. Uh, and I want to see people be killed. So... It says divine justice is written in blood and I also saw the word vengeance here you either are becoming the perfect assassin or be the next target and I was like okay you got me so excited about that another grimdark or a grimdark fantasy that I heard many great things about and that is Blackwing by Ed McDonald uh, I know that Leanna really likes this. Alan from the Library of Alexandria really likes this. I've seen nothing but great things. Um, it says hope, reason, humanity, the misery breaks them all. Um, and it is a gritty fantasy debut about a man's desperate battle to survive his own dark destiny. And it says for fans of the Black Company or Joe Abercrombie, I'm not a fan of the Joe Abercrombie and I haven't read Black Company, but I've heard great things and I do like a grim dark fantasy. So I'm intrigued by this one. And then some of these like are used and it's like if I love them, I'm cool with like getting a, you know, a nicer edition or matching set with like the sequels and things like that. But for $8 you can't you, you you can't it's not that bad another book that i picked up for the dragon vlog is sorcerer to the crown by zin cho this is another one that i did some googling did a little research and this is apparently a dragon book and the royal society of unnatural philosophers maintains that magic within his majesty's lands but lately the once proper institute has fallen into disgrace naming an altogether unsuitable general gentleman why can't i talk today an altogether unsuitable gentleman as its sorcerer royal and allowing England's stores of magic to bleed dry. At least the society hasn't stooped so low as to permit women to practice what is obviously a man's profession. At his wit's end, Zachariah's wife, sorcerer royal, ventures to the border of fairyland to discover why England's magical stock are drying up. An adventure that brings him into contact with Prunella Gentleman, a woman with immense power and an unfathomable gift, and sets him on the path that will alter the nature of society. A woman with immense power and an unfathomable gift and sets him on a path that will alter the nature of sorcery in all of Britain and the world at large. Now nothing about that synopsis says dragon but there is a dragon on the cover and Goodreads reviewers and online people would lead me to believe that there is a dragon in this book. So we will find out together this summer. Next up, I picked this up because a sequel to this really recently was released and I've heard great things about this, but people always say that there is a sequel to come out in the ether somewhere. And so this is An Unkindness of Magicians by Kat Howard. And it gives Doc Academia a vibe, but this is a magical revenge thriller. So I don't know about this. If you've read this, let me know in the chat, in the comments, if you think this is any good, but it has like that unseen world, magician for hire, duels, powerful magical houses. I'm intrigued. I like a court intrigue. I like politics. I like messy interpersonal dynamics with magic. So excited about that one. 
the next is a bind up of an entire trilogy and this is the cycle of fire which comprises storm warden keeper of the keys and shadow fane by Janie warts uh Janie warts is an author that i have predicted that i'm gonna love and she is a uh, a really well respected female fantasy author who has been writing for over 30 years and she has this her like magnum opus is the wars of light and shadow and i think there are 10 books out and i think the 11th is coming out very soon and she has like such a large backlist of books i have a standalone on my tbr of hers i have the first two books in the wars of light and shadow and then now i have this and one thing about me is when i like an author and or i like have a lot of work by an author on my shelf i will do a marathon i will do the dash okay and I like a marathon of a series i like to read an author's back especially if i really like them and so this is out of print as well so I, I wasn't gonna find this anywhere else and if i did i would have found each individual book in like mass markets and Jan Janie works is also an artist so she tends to do all the like interior artworks and the cover design on her books and so i just love classic fantasy and i'm excited to see what it's about it's a sorcery and destiny for centuries the elusive Vare have trained sorcerers to stand against shadow fame's demons who seek nothing less than mankind's destruction and the world's total conquest now the demons have won corrupt human allies and the last great defenders have fallen the fire lord died mad and the storm warden languishes imprisoned and disgraced new champions will arise from unlikely beginnings an orphan and an apprentice a fisher girl and her disaffected brother each with a power a secret and a flaw that will shape their destinies the demons awaken the champions choose sides and it begins again the cycle of fire Janie words magnificent high fantasy trilogy complete in one volume for the first time excited and then last but not least we have a veil of spears by bradley p bolo the third book in the song of the shattered sands this is in hardcover i do have the first two books in this series uh and it is a series that i predict i really will enjoy will i we don't know but uh, i know the hardcovers aren't readily available at least i don't believe so and i've seen most of the books in the series in um mass market and the ones that i do have i got from like a book outlet or like on a uh, a bargain bin table so I saw this hardcover I thought I would try it and at this point it was seeing that I'm now committed to at least the first three books in uh that series and the series of six books so you know let's hope that I actually end up loving it so I picked up a ton of books this is the last book so let me give you a stack of all the books that I picked up so here we have the 12 things that I purchased technically there are 14 books here because we have a bind up of a trilogy but I'm super super excited about this haul if you made it to the end of this video let me know which of these books are you most interested in my thoughts on and leave an apple emoji for my trip to the big apple I'm so excited I was able to meet Becca and Rachel and the other girls who joined us in the sweet little baby uh and I will see you all in my next video goodbye